Patrick Reed's controversial career has frequently left admirers with unanswered concerns. Why would he say that about a teammate in the Ryder Cup? What was he contemplating while he moved sand towards the hero? Was he truly entitled to relief for embedded balls that time at Torrey? Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today, we'll be looking at why Liv Golf's Patrick Reed reopened a lawsuit. Yeah, you heard it right. So, let's start our video. A defamation complaint filed in his name against Golf Channel and Randall Shambly was withdrawn from federal court in Texas and refiled in federal court in Florida at the end of last month. In its amended form, the list of defendants has been expanded. Golf Channel pundits Shane Bacon, Damon Hack, and Eamon Lynch have been added, but its purpose remains largely unchanged. It demands $750 million in damages for reputational harm allegedly caused by Reed by calculated, intentional, fraudulent, and or irresponsible attacks. Aside from that, the largest difference is that Florida has replaced Texas. Why the switch? Multiple legal experts told Golf.com that adding additional defendants did not justify the move. The first claim could have been easily modified and left in Texas. There must be a further explanation. Larry Clayman, Reed's attorney, did not respond to a request for an interview, but legal experts provided many probable answers. When Reed's case was initially filed in Texas, it was assigned to Alfred H. Bennett, a federal judge who is known for being a golf enthusiast and a stickler for the rules. Given Reed's reputation and the judge's penchant for telling it like it is, it's not unreasonable to assume that Clayman and his client felt that they had been dealt a bad hand and believed that they would do better in a different court. This would not be extraordinary, according to Matt Jacobs, a former federal prosecutor and partner at the international law firm, the LA Piper, attorneys frequently seek out judges in areas that they believe would be favorable to their cases. In the absence of another explanation, Jacobs says, It looks to all the world that Clayman is shopping around. In this instance, there is an additional complication. Clayman may have considered removing the case from Texas as soon as Bennett was appointed to it in August. However, circumstances appear to have compelled him to act. About a month ago, on September 15th, the District of Columbia's Court of Appeals, the highest court in the District of Columbia, upheld the recommendation that Clayman is suspended from practicing law in D.C. for conduct that was deemed unprofessional in a different case unrelated to Reed's, a sexual harassment suit Clayman was representing the plaintiff in, which was initially filed more than a decade ago. Though the 18-month suspension was handed down in Washington, D.C., it has far-reaching consequences because the federal district court in Texas, where the Reed suit was filed, has its own local rule stating that any lawyer suspended or disbarred by another court shall immediately cease practicing before this court. Experts say that if Clayman sought to retain the case in Texas, at this stage, he would not be able to represent Reed there. In the Florida district where Reed's lawsuit was refiled, the local regulation is more lenient. An attorney can petition the judge for relief to have a suspension postponed. Clayman appears to have a greater likelihood of representing Reed in the district where the matter has been refiled. The suspension of Clayman is the most recent obstacle for a case that according to legal experts was doomed from the start. Jacob asserts that defamation law errors on the side of preserving the First Amendment right to free expression, especially when it comes to statements concerning public people such as Reed. Reed would have to meet a high legal standard in order to prove slander. Jacob thinks it would also be difficult to demonstrate that he has incurred a monetary loss. Patrick Reed plays golf for a living, and he gets paid a lot of money to do so. Jacob says, Given that he recently signed a highly lucrative contract with Liv, the notion that he's been banned from making a living is ludicrous at first glance. The damages Reed seeks to surpass $750 million, a cartoonish amount that significantly exceeds Reed's career earnings, according to Jacobs. Obviously, even cases with minimal prospect of success in court can have a purpose. They can have a chilling effect, silencing the critics that the lawsuit is attempting to silence. They can create hefty legal fees and headlines on the top page. Clayman, who in 2020 sued the Chinese government for $20 trillion over the coronavirus pandemic, has demonstrated proficiency on this final front. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, he's pathologically litigious. A former colleague described Clayman as a type of attorney who would sue anyone who criticizes his tie. Clayman has a reputation, like Reed. Who your lawyer is doesn't always dictate the merits of your case, Jacob says. But if you can't find an attorney who hasn't been suspended from representing you, that might suggest a problem with your case to begin with. And that's all for today's video. What are your thoughts on this? Let me know in the comments section down below. I hope that you found this video interesting, and if you want to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. See you in the following video with some more of the latest updates, and until then, stay tuned!